Check that out. Eight ball corner pocket. That is a midge muncher if I've ever seen one. Look at how dark he is. And that is a true certified USDA dimey dime. Now compared to a lot of the Western United States, the Driftless region doesn't have as many big pieces of public land. Now, a lot of our public land comes in the form of stream bank easements, bridge access points, and the occasional sprinkling of your county parks. Now there's nothing wrong with this. It gives us anglers a great opportunity to chase after, I would say world-class trout fishing. The only problem is, is we are very limited based on property lines and that pesky barbed wire fence. And that's why I'm a, I'm a little embarrassed coming to you today. I consider myself a big time public land angler. I like going and getting lost, sending it for an entire day and really being in the wild environment of a piece of public land. And all the research I do, all the various map searching, I have no idea how, no clue why, but <laughs> The Duck Egg County Forest, 700 plus acres of prime time driftless real estate has completely, whoop, gone right past my radar and I cannot believe it took us this long to find it. Regardless if you're an angler, there are so many amazing opportunities for outdoorsmen in a place like Duck Egg. If you're an equestrian, there are endless miles of trails. Same thing if a hiker, go get lost, you can go up and down these driftless bluffs and see so many amazing things. And when the timing's right, they're open to hunting and can really foster some big old bad bucks, I'll tell you that. And yeah, for anglers, the Springville branch of the Bad Axe River runs right through the heart of this valley. Two distinct sections, one upper, one lower. It's divided by this big flood earthen dam type thing to help uh, lessen the effects of April showers, which are coming soon. And we just did two pretty nice sessions on the Springville branch, one on the upper and one on the lower. And this is why I wanna to come to you today and talk about duck egg. I wanna talk about the Springville and I wanna talk about the two distinct sections because if you're coming, you better come correct. And there's, there's various things you need to be aware of depending on which one you wanna to go to. And before we jump into that, I gotta just do two quick things. The first and the foremost is always, shout out to you OG subs, shout out to you Instagram commenters, and all you Discord users. You guys, it's seriously so amazing. This community and everything that's being built is because of you. And for those of you who haven't jumped on yet, come on, it's so much fun. The Discord, it's popping, man. We're having a lot of fun over there. I've always got it linked down below, so. Go give it a check, I'd love to love to have you along for the ride. And the second thing I wanna get, get across is that Duck Egg has some amazing articles. It's a big piece of public land. So Wisconsin DNR, the various county sites will have a lot of information on this. So don't take what I say for canon. Do your own research before you go. The more tools you have in the toolbox, the better. That's that's what I always say. All right, that's enough setup. Let's jump right into the lower section of Duck Egg County Forest. Now time for the fun part. Let's talk some shop. When we're looking at the lower section of Duck Egg, we gotta be aware of three main things. The first thing being access. This is the prime example of the double-edged sword because on one half, you have really easy access. You have trails that parallel the creek, you have hiking trails more in the middle of the valley that you can, you can run up this valley in lickety split. It's no time flat. The only problem is, <laughs> the other side of that sword, you're gonna have a lot of traffic. You can run into other anglers, you can run into hikers, dog walkers, I mean, you name it. This isn't a bad thing, you just gotta be aware of it. Go out and meet some other anglers, see some other folk out there. It's, it's, it's a lot of fun. I will say it's not that river runs through it in the middle of nowhere by yourself. It's gonna be, gonna be a bit more crowded. Second thing I'd like to go over is the, the river itself. The Springville branch of the Bad Axe River, it is a spring creek. There is a ton, a ton of life. And it follows the quintessential riffle run pool sort of setup that a lot of these driftless streams tend to have. And it, whew, it is prime. It is so much fun to target, especially bringing two rods. 
As you can kind of see in, in that section, I was carrying a dry fly rod and a nymph rod. We were able to work the pools as they were rising and able to work the riffles to get on those more active feeding fish. I will say, the fish were quite spooky because the water, it is clear as gin. And this is the third thing I wanna go over is the fish. Holy cow. There are so many brown trout. Just, it's amazing to see how healthy a population of fish is. And when the water's that clear and you see them all spooking, it's like, oh wow, I didn't realize there were 30 fish in this pool. Folks, you gotta be super sneaky. Real, real sneaky. Cause it's this, it's, oh God, if you've seen it, you know. It is the most heart wrenching, worst feeling in the world seeing the domino effect of one fish spook, two fish spook, 70 fish in a panicked frenzy storm thinking, well, on to the next one, I guess. Not gonna catch any fish here. <laughs> it's really important to get your sneak on and be as tactile as possible of your line placement, your boot placement, and really how you're picking apart each run. You're gonna yield more fish if you're a little bit more strategic about it. And keep in mind that as much as you can see those fish, they can see you. Now I will say this, as you meander your way up the Springville branch, you have so many great opportunities to fish. You're surrounded by the driftless hills and the, the timber covering on every end and the sound of the water. It, it really is quite the majestic place. And as you keep going up, you'll be stopped by this big earthen dam and a huge culvert pool. And that marks the end of the lower section. From here, I'm gonna stop and talk about the upper section. And I really think y'all ought to stick around for this because it does change in quite the significant way, in my opinion. So let's real quick stop this and talk about the upper section of Duck Egg. With the upper section of Duck Egg, we're gonna be doing a one-two switcheroo. I'm gonna go down the line. The lower section was really easy access. The upper section, hard access. Lower section, riffle run pool. Upper section, wide and skinny. Lower section, lots of freaking fish. You can kind of find them in the riffles. Upper section, wide open, spooky, spooky fish. So let's go over this. Upper section access. You have a couple of access points. They're not the best in the world, I'll be the first to say. You either have to go straight down a hill or straight across some nasty switchbacks. And when you get down to the river itself, there are smaller paths. They look more like game paths or small equestrian trails that do parallel parts of the river, but it's not near as easy access as our lower section. Again, double-edged sword. If you've got a pair of young legs, you're not afraid of some adventure, this is for you. It's tough to get down. But once you get down there, you are really going to find yourself not, not too many other people. I can almost guarantee it. And the problem is, you get down, Buster, you better be able to get back up. Those hills are no joke. Getting in, riding that downhill vibe, no problem. Getting out, I hope you're doing your stair stepper. I'll just say that. <laughs> Second thing to look at is the river itself. Our lower section was really channelized, a bit more narrow, a bit deeper. The upper section is kind of nasty. There's a lot of flat sections. There's a lot of places where the water probably doesn't get much deeper, two, three feet. Maybe in some of the deeper pools, you're looking at four or five, but as you keep moving up in this upper section, the water really starts to get to be smaller and almost pocket-like. You, you get a lot of pocket water sections where fish will be sitting, not many, one, two here or there, but it's always worth casting in. Just give it a cheeky go. And gosh darn it, going into the, the third part, the fish. I, I would hope you guys take this with a grain of salt because the day that we had on this upper section, it was not ideal by any means. We have bluebird skies, nice and windy, nice and sunny, and the water looked as low and clear as it's ever been. It was rough. It was a grinder grind. I spooked every single fish in all of Verdon County, it seemed. I would I would barely even get my, my line out before you see all these fish just spooking left, right, center. I don't even know where they're coming from. They're coming from under the rocks. They're so thick loaded 
with prime brown trout. I will say this, I spooked some big old boys. I'm talking big, healthy fish, where I'm, I'm wondering how is that, that size, that caliber fish sitting in a place like that, what? Gosh, it gets me, gets me chomping at the bit to get back out there, man. It, oh, it, it irks me. I, I will just, again, reiterate, the upper section is almost complete opposite of the lower section. So keep that in mind when you're going. You gotta be a little bit more ready for the hike, Gotta be a little bit more ready for shallower approaches and a lot, a lot of spooky fish. Wow, we just did a quick look at the bottom to top section of duck egg. The Springville branch of the Bad Axe River is full of some bad axe fish. I'll be the first to tell you. And I really hope you guys get something out of these videos, but I also implore you to do your own research. Grab up as many tools as you can before you come to the party and try and try and trick some of those brown trout because there is no end of really great publications and government websites that have a ton of primo information on places like duck egg. And I don't know, I get really fired up about places like this. They're, they're so special and I want to share them with folks like you who are just as passionate and want to go, want to go get on some awesome fish and get lost in the driftless. I really hope you all got a kick out of this more technical breakdown of duck egg. And, if you're looking for some more duck egg related content, well, you are in luck. Let me tell you, I've got a couple amazing sessions catching up those wily brown trout on the Springville branch of the Bad Axe. Go check them out, great series. And if you're maybe not so much interested in the fishing aspect, well, I'm gonna be testing out a new video series called No Fish, Just Bliss. It's gonna be kind of what my lens sees outside of the angling realm. I hope y'all enjoy, and I hope y'all stick around for more because fly off season, we got, we got some cool stuff coming along. And wherever your adventures end up taking you, I really hope you keep your feet in the water. And until next time, folks, tight lines.